What's up you guys? Hey, thanks for watching again. In this video, we're gonna go over another suture tutorial. This one's gonna be the subcuticular stitch because I know a lot of students ask about this stitch, so we're gonna go over this one. Uh, very important when you are closing the skin to make it look nice, so this is what we're gonna do. So first, I wanna thank uh, Medical Creations for creating this little suture kit and also sponsoring this video. I really appreciate that. This is their little kit. You get Adson's pickup, which we're gonna use today, a needle driver we're gonna use, scissors I'm probably gonna use, a scalpel, and also a hemostatic. That. So that's pretty cool. You also get this little suture pad and a bunch of suture if you want to practice suturing. So that is that. All right, so today I'm going to get some 3 nylon because uh, last time we got some nylon that was kind of hard to see. I apologize about that. Usually in a subcuticular suture, you do not use nylon, but we're going to use this because that's what I have and you can see it, I think, a little bit better, okay? First of all, quick review. I do palm the needle driver like that. I try to have my finger as close as possible to the tip of the needle driver and then also two-thirds of the way back on the needle at a 90 degree or a little bit of an angle in front like that, okay? I'm going to pick one of these things here and I'm gonna start uh, let's say about right here now this is gonna be a little bit different because this is obviously not skin so this subcuticular stitch goes actually in the dermis when you open up the skin it's gonna be the very white layer it's just underneath the epidermis right the epidermis looks very flesh colored and then the dermis is the thing that's very white underneath what you're going to grab here is I'm gonna try to uh, have you guys see this so what you're gonna do here is you're gonna go under now this is going to be almost like under the dermis layer okay and you're going to pick it up and it's going to come out of the dermis layer and not in the epidermis layer so as you will note I'm going the opposite side of my right hand okay I'm gonna do that first I'm gonna go deep to superficial and superficial to deep and then we're gonna tie the knot deep and it, the knot is gonna be hidden okay so that's very important you want to go um, if you're left hand you're gonna be do the opposite you're gonna do the opposite side of yourself but you're still gonna go deep superficial superficial deep so I'm gonna grab this suture here here and actually I want this to be on this side now this is a little bit tougher most of the time um, I use Vicryl 40 Vicryl to close the skin but a lot of people use monocryl as well so we can do that you can use either one okay so note where my hand is my hand is going to be up top I don't want to obscure everything by putting my hand down here and then I can't really see as well I'm gonna have my hand up here Okay, and I'm gonna peel this skin back a little bit like this. It works a lot better actually with real skin. I'm gonna peel it back a little bit so the suture is going in here. I'm going just on the other side of that from myself. I'm gonna grab the skin. I'm gonna peel it back just a tad like this. I'm gonna find now uh, the place I wanna go in and note the place you wanna go in is exactly the same depth of the place that you came out over here. And also notice like how I have this needle driver. Like I'm not keeping it like this. Okay, to, to put in, it's a little, it's much harder. So I take the needle driver and I flip it around in my hands and look, I have it like this, okay? Way, way easier. So I'm gonna go in here and then I'm gonna come out deep and hopefully that depth is the same level I came, I, I went in in the first one, okay? And I do switch back, you see that? I, I put my fingers in that one. So sometimes when it's a little bit more difficult to get a hold of or whatever, I do put my fingers in the needle driver. If you're palming it, you don't have to palm it all the time. You can switch back and forth. Okay, now I'm gonna bring both of them out towards me. And this is gonna be a simple, inter, uh, I'm sorry, an interrupted suture. So I got that one actually uh, mixed up because I can't see. So we're gonna go through here and you know poor form don't do that in the OR or whatever but anyway you need both of your ends of the suture to come out the same side this is a big mistake I see a lot of students do is they have one on the other side and then and then one on this side and when you tie it you actually depress that the knot depresses the suture and you want the suture to be on top pulling the skin together perfectly you don't want the knot sitting above that suture that's going across there right what do I do is pull these two together together and see how it, that skin comes together now this is not going to come together the same because it's rubber and not real skin but that's a pretty good spot I, th I feel like if I open that up I can see that they're pretty much the same depth and if this was the dermis it would be pretty good I could probably even get closer to the skin but as long as I have it in the dermis I know that, that dermis is going to come together and honestly a lot of times uh, the skin is not the epidermis is not perfectly together but I can squeeze it together with my fingers as long as the dermis is together because I know the dermis is the, the strong layer the, the epidermis is 
not. And the fat layer is not either, right? So the dermis comes together and then I can take a little, you know, the skin affix or whatever you call it, the glue, and glue the epidermis together. You can do that as long as you have the dermis, which is a strong layer, uh, together nicely here. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll, I'll pull it like this and I'll make sure that it comes together how I want it to come together. If it doesn't, I'll redo that stitch. And that's a big, I think a lot of students do that is like, I see them, you know, doing their knot and I see it's not going to come together and they tie the whole thing and at the end it's like, it doesn't look Good. So they're like, uh, what do I do wrong? I'm like, well, first of all, you know, you have the two sutures, you know, one on top and one on bottom. And then second, you did the whole thing. Like just pull it to tight, pull it together and see if it's going to look like you want it to look right. I'm just going to make a knot ready, regular one right here. And most of the time I use, uh, like I said, Vicryl, which is a polyfilament. So I just use one knot. You can double, you know, do two throws at the beginning. That's okay. So and actually, let me just take this out for a second to demonstrate something. What I do is also, I pull this and then I pull lengthwise on uh, the length of the incision. I pull that way. I don't pull this way to get that knot to come down. That's very important. If you pull this way, you're, you're spreading the incision open while you're trying to pull the knot down. It's like weird. So if you can pull this way, it comes together much better. And then just do a couple more. Depends on whatever, however many you do, depending on the, the um, suture material. And I am going to make a video about that as well. But these, these are the sexy videos where you do the actual closure and then we'll do like the boring stuff for the people that really, really care about it. <laughs> we'll do those later. So that is an interrupted and let's just do a running real quick. Okay. So these I do, so like for a five millimeter incision, like a port site for appendicitis or, uh, or laparoscopic appendectomy or a lap coli or something like that. That's what I do. Okay. Now if I'm doing a running and I'm starting at this side, uh, this is what I'll do. I'll do this first and you know, uh, note that this rubber stuff is not exactly like skin and so it does come apart a little bit easier. So you gotta be a little bit careful if you practice on this, but you get a, a pretty good idea. And this doesn't come, this, like I said, this is coming together the same as if it was skin. So I'll do this real quick. Okay, and, and like if you watch my hand right there, like there's a, there's a lot of turning. And so you really, it's tough to do when you have uh, your fingers in the, the needle driver. So, uh, and then I'm gonna make sure both of them are on the same side here. And then I'm gonna tie this, and this is going to be for demonstration purposes. This is probably not gonna look you know, perfect, but I'm gonna make a knot here. And then if I'm, like I said, if I'm starting it and it's kind of a long incision, say like uh, what I used to use for open hernia uh, incisions are a little bit longer. I like inguinal hernia. This is what I did. So cut that and then I'll go backhand. So I haven't talked about backhand too much, but this is how I do backhand. This, you see my hand like this? This is essentially how I sew backhand. I don't sew backhand like this, okay? I mostly sew like this. And so then I'll come out the apex, but this is still in the dermis uh, of this skin. And so this is not coming out right. So I'm gonna demonstrate it by just coming out this way. But essentially you would come out of the dermis, uh, but, but the rubber just is not allowing me to do it. So I'm just gonna kind of, that way you're starting in the corner. This is one way to do this. So then imagine this is in the dermis, okay? Then I'm gonna come this way. Now this is the thing that a lot of people wanna know how to do. And I see a lot of students try to, try to kind of like arc the needle around like this. And it's essentially what you want to do. You want the needle to go in here, like down here, and then you want the, the suture to come this way. And then you're gonna make like an S and it's gonna go like this, okay? But there's a lot of different ways to do it. You don't have to have the suture going in like this way, right? You can have it going this way. It goes in, I pull this back a little bit. And then instead of making an arc, um, you know, an arc that way, it's, it's kind of making an arc, but you're pulling the tissue out. So when you let it go, it does make that arc. Okay. Does that make sense? And then when I come out this way, that suture, I don't know if we can see it, but that suture has made an arc this way. And then the second one, same thing. I put my hand up here and 
I want to go, I, want, I pull it across and I say, that's my entry point for the next one. Okay, and then I go and I go in here and then turn it out and it's gonna go that way. And then each time you come out, you are going in to the next site very close. It's either a, right across parallel. Let's see, pull this tight a little bit. So that's gonna come together pretty good. It's a little bit of an angle. Like, so you're either going across exactly like that or the next one. So the next one I might just go like this, put this angle here, I'll come in right there. And for some tissue that works better, it just depends on the person's tissue really. Sometimes you need to go totally parallel and sometimes it's really lax depending on the part of the body that you're doing this. Sometimes it's really lax and, and a little bit of angle is actually better. See that comes together like pretty, pretty good there. I'll do one more here. And this is all in the dermis. So all of these you want to be very close to the same depth, okay? And then you have a couple options when you finish. And this one, uh, actually the easiest one I'm gonna show you, what I do is just go backwards. I just start going backwards. And if it's a long enough incision and you ran it, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna get tangled up. And especially if this is a polyfilament suture, then that's like all I do. I don't, I stop doing knots and stuff because the, if it, especially as a polyfilament, well, even monofilament, the suture, you, have, you throw a knot and it has a potential to get the body to try to spit the stitch, right? And do like a, like a little suture abscess type of thing. Um, or it tries to come out or it's like not, it's not very flush because there's a big knot in there and the person's skin is really thin and they come back and they complain like, hey, I got this big, you know, knot thing in here and stuff. So I do that and again, this is for demonstration because it's, uh, you know, this rubber is not quite like skin, but pretty close. And so I just come back the entire way of the length of the uh, incision and then all of that gets tangled up and I will just pull it out there. And then I might even go out the other side, like all the way out back there, pull it a little tight and then cut it off right there. And then I'll just go bing and it'll dive back underneath the skin and then you're all done. All right, you guys, so that is a subcuticular suture or stitch. Hope you liked that video. I hope it helped you a lot and I will see you in the next video. Subscribe, like, share. Thank you guys very much. And if you want a discount actually on these um, kits, you can check in the comments and you can get a 10% discount at their website. All right, you guys, see you in the next one.